Hello everyone, welcome back to Chill Deal Trades where I analyze the stock market so you know what's going on. Today we're going to cover kind of the overall stock market because we've had, you know, the first time in a while more than two red days in a row. And so we just want to figure out where the markets are headed because all the stocks we talk about the, on this channel will be impacted if the overall markets, which is the S&P 500, SPY, and QQQ, which is NASDAQ, continue to turn lower. Um, so if you're here and you hit the like button, go ahead and hit that real quick and sub to the channel. We're on the goal. We're almost to 500. So thank you so much. And once we get to 500, we're gonna be, I'm going to be doing daily videos for you guys until we get to a thousand subs. And we'll start a Sunday night live stream where we can all talk about char charts and stocks together. Um, so before we get into the charting of the SPY and QQQ, I want to look Guys, take you guys through a couple things that I always keep an eye on to understand how the overall market and economy is looking. So um, if you're new to investing, maybe these are things you haven't heard of, but if, you're, if, you've, you know, if you've been here for a while, maybe you already look at these, but these are really important. So the first thing um, that you need to understand about markets is liquidity. The market the stocks go up when there's a lot of liquidity, and often there's a couple ways that liquidity goes into the market. One is by Fed spending. So this is the QE from the Fed. And so as you can see, I mean, we're at record highs, higher than ever. This is no surprise to anybody. Um, basically, they buy bonds um, and mortgage-backed securities. And by doing so, one, it pushes more money to the markets because people don't want to invest in bonds. Um, so people put their money in stocks, which are assets instead. So that's really what QE does and how it has an effect on the market. So as long as we're moving up, continuously moving up the market will not have any big downturns um, we've heard a lot of talk about taper taper will not crash the market but it could impact how um, rapid increases we have you know we've had the market go up really ridiculous amounts over the last year and so if taper happens we won't see as drastic moves to the upside but it won't crash the market it might pull it back a little bit more but it won't crash the market the next thing to look at is the federal fund rate so this is kind of I would say, to put it simply, how interest rates are set. And so, you know, what this, what we see here is interest rates are federal fund rates basically at zero, the FFR. Um, and what this means is it's really cheap to borrow money. So, as you know, the housing market's been exploding. It's cheap to borrow or buy, get a mortgage, 30-year mortgage. Tech companies can borrow money at really low rates, which helps booster their growth. And when their growth looks good, their revenue looks good and then people buy more of their stock. And so those are the two macro indicators that really impact stocks um, and the stock market. And these are things we really need to keep an eye on because if we see tapering, what does that mean? If we see that the Fed has to raise interest rates sooner than they wanted, that could have more negative impact on the markets because you're pooling liquidity. You're pulling liquidity out of the markets with these two main um, tools. And so macro, those are things we want to look at. Second thing is you know, we've heard a lot about inflation. Well, is inflation going to continue to go higher? What does that mean for the market? Have we reached a peak? And so a couple things I look at here. Oh, actually, let me get to GDP first because that's an important part with inflation. So inflation is okay as long as we have GDP growth to accommodate that or to move in parallel. So when you have um, inflation go up, when you have prices go up, you really want GDP to track that. But what we're starting to see is we're starting to see GDP f start to curl and kind of flatten out more than than CPI and PPI numbers are. And so when we look here, what we see is obviously COVID crash. We saw after that amazing GDP growth, which is basically a recovery. Um, and then we, you know, saw small at the beginning, end of last year, and then we had like about six percent growth GDP growth over the last two quarters. And so, but what we're seeing is we're seeing this start to curve over. And so when we look at the forecast, forecasts never really are 100% true because they don't really know. But what we see on the forecast is we're seeing that go back down lower and lower. And the main thing to call out here is within a year, they're expecting GDP growth to be back to where it was pre-COVID or historical averages, which are about 2%. Um, and that's really important because when we look at the CPI and PPI numbers, what are we seeing there? Are we seeing inflation start to cool down, which is basically PPI? or um, sorry, the um, CPI numbers um, and kind of what's that correlation. So obviously this is kind of the raw numbers of how um, consumer prices have gone up over time. Of course they go up over time um, and it does, you know, the forecast is saying that it's going to start slowing down or topping here. 
Do I think that's going to happen? I do not. And the main reason I don't think it's happening is COVID is causing much more um, issues than we thought. We're having new strains come out one after the other, essentially, and that's causing supply issues. Supply issues mean even though there's big demand, we don't have enough supply for it. And basically that shrinks growth. And so even though this is saying we've kind of hit a peak, I believe that PPI and CPR are still going up based on the supply data that's coming out and the shipping data, um, chip shortages, all those kind of things. That's really going to slow down demand. So when we look at the, this is the rate of change or kind of the, the growth of PPI, um, or am I saying producer? I'm on the wrong one. Where is my, oh, here's inflation. So inflation is very similar to CPI. Um, and we have seen inflation start to level out. And so this is what we really want to keep an eye on because when we go to the PPI numbers, we're still seeing PPI accelerate, which is producer price index. And so if we're seeing prices for, you know, businesses essentially go up, that means that they're going to continue to push that cost onto consumers. And then when that cost gets pushed onto consumers, they have less purchasing power, plus supply chain issues means that GDP is going to shrink while these numbers continue to move up. I think they're going to move up at a slower rate than we've seen, um, you know, from like three and four uh, percent, from like four to six percent. Now we're seeing like seven point eight to eight point three percent. I think it's going to continue, and we'll, you know, we'll top out eventually. I don't think we're there yet, mostly because of the Delta variant. And so these are all kind of the metrics that I keep an eye on every time the numbers come out every month. I kind of look at them, analyze them, because if inflation continues to increase. There's going to be a point where the Fed is going to have to start tapering because things are too hot. And at some point, GDP shrinks enough and prices go up. That's called stagflation. And stagflation is probably, besides hyperinflation, which is when you get, you know, um, inflation at like 10, 20 percent plus. But stagflation is really worse because you have things getting more expensive for people, but you have growth slowing or growth much lower then prices are increasing, which really squeezes the consumer and the consumer can't purchase as much with hurts the economy. So those are things that I'm keeping an eye on, but let's go ahead and get to the technicals to see kind of how the charts are looking. Oh, I need to move this. There we go. I need to move that, but okay. So now we're gonna, first we'll start on SPY. So on the daily chart, you know, we, this is the first time in a while that we've had more than a couple days. So we have three red days in a row and we kind of look at the top. It's been one, two, three, four, five, six days of more downturn. So this is a big, a big turn of events because we haven't had more than three days or four days of downturn. I think basically since last year or right here back in February. And that was when we had a bigger pullback, I believe on the SPY. Last time we had more than a couple days was a 6% pullback. So if we see the trends continue, that could be a situation. But let's look more at the technicals to see what we're seeing. So 20 EMA, we, we closed it below it for the second day. Tomorrow's going to really, I would say, tell us a lot. Um, because if we get above that 20 EMA again and confirm, that's really bullish. When we look at the um, RSI, RSI is bouncing off a support zone. So when you look here, you kind of have all these little spikes and all the spikes are in this zone. So we're hitting the first zone of support. So if we can hold this and start to move our way back up, it's another buy dip. But if we move up here, maybe a little bit just for a little bit of breath for the market and then we turn back down and hit below, then we're going to have a bigger pullback in the market. So really keep an eye on RSI on the daily. And for MACD, we have a little bit of stuff. Uh, it's telling us a little bit what's going on here. We do have it still, you know, widely above zero but we are seeing some negative momentum. So we'll have to see again, if we, if this was a bottom here on this double candle, then, you know, this might flatten out and start to move back up. But MACD is, I would say a pretty large lag lagging indicator. We want to look at what RSI confirms first, and then MACD will probably follow that. When it comes to long-term trend lines, we see this long-term trend line that bounced off both of these candles. We are hitting that right now. And so we close below it and we'll have to see, okay, did the market need some breath? Can it break above 449 on the SPY? If it can, then, you know, we're back to this up zone here and we're we'll probably break all time highs again. But if it gets rejected back below the 20 day and breaks below those trend lines, both these trend lines and this trend line, then we most likely have more downside. Um, and so when we come in a shorter time frame just to see those points, we really see some really important support zones. So 
As I said, we really need a break above this range for more upside, but on the reverse, when we look at support, we have support at 441. You can just see all these candles here. And when we go to the 50, let's see what the 50 is. Actually, I want to look at the 50 on the daily because that gives a little better data point. It is at 441. The 50 day is at 441. So if we see more downside, 441 is a really big point. And then the 100 day, it's kind of a no man's land down here. Um, but when we go to the 4 hour, look where the 100 day is on the 4 hour. 441. So 441 is going to be a significant point if we get more downside. Um, if we can't hold there, the next big support is 437, and that's kind of a zone that I'm going to be keeping an eye on when we go to the daily. Um, the 100 days below that, which is at another big support line, we can put that in there actually. You can see all these wick candles. So 436 to 429, if we see a lot more downside negativity in the news, all these things pushing consumers out of stocks for the short term. Um, so those are a couple things we want to keep an eye on there. When we go on the hourly chart, you know, RSI gets got oversold and we're really going to want to see how it reacts on the hourly. So if, you know, this continues to break up and gets back more up to 70 and breaks above 449, then we're most likely back in a bullish phase and we'll break above highs. But this is really line in the sand for me. If we can get above 449, then more upside for the market. Okay, let's get to QQQ. Okay, so for the Qs, let me get my 20 EMA up again. So 20 EMA, we closed above it, but we had a wick below it today. So we're going to have to see how tomorrow, tomorrow looks. Again, four red days. It's been a while since we have four red days. was back in April was the last time we had four red days in a row. And as we can see there in April, we had an 8% pullback. So we'll have to see if we close below 20 day. We are seeing trends that are potentially showing a bigger pullback. When we look at RSI, RSI is back testing this downward trend line. And so we'll have to see, does it bounce off that and hold above? If so, then that's pretty bullish. But maybe we get some sympathy relief and it breaks below and heads to this next support zone around 45 to 50. Then we could have some more downside in the queues as well. Kind of similarly to, um, to SPY, we have this, I'll call it 38. 378.6 um, is kind of lying in the sand. If we can get back above that, that's above the 20 day on the on the four hour candle, that's going to be pretty bullish for things and we'll probably see some more upside. So very similarly, we kind of have this, this kind of sideways pattern that happened for about a week and a half to two weeks. Same with SPY. And if we get back into that zone, you know, we're going to be looking for a, a break of the high again. We're in pretty big support zone here. So we've had two four hour candles bounce off the same zone. That's pretty bullish. But we'll have to see, you know, we could have a big down day, some sideways action and kind of creating a bear flag. So that's kind of what I'm going to be looking in the next couple of days. Do we see sideways action or do we see downward action? That's going to be a big thing because, again, really big support here. As you can see, all these candles of indecision and then a big green day. So if we see indecision here and maybe a bear flag, we could see more downside. And because we don't have any resistance there, the next downside under 3724 is 268 and so that's really what we're going to be looking at when we look at the 50 day let's see what the 50 day is aha we bounce off the 50 day on the four hour ironic on the daily we're still quite a bit away from 50 day which if we get more red volume more bearish we are a long ways away which means we could see a significant more downside but we're going to have to see if we confirm with more red days but we did bounce off the 50 EMA on the four hour chart, which is pretty bullish. Two candles in a row, big wicks. That could be a reversal pattern, you know, uh, inverted ham, ha uh, hammers, what some people call it, or it's not an inverted hammer, that's a hammer candle. Um, so we'll have to see what happens there. Um, 100 day, it's right below this 638, 37 zone. So that's kind of an important part. And we go on the daily chart one last time is we have this long term. We're really far away from the long term down upward trend lines but we are pretty close to testing this line and that kind of is in association with where those resistance point support zones were around 371 so those are a couple things to look at in the short term if we have a break lower I'll make another video but uh, really curious what you guys think really appreciate you always stopping by it means a lot to me go check out our discord description as well as check out the twitch where we live stream 
that's in the description as well. So I thank you.